thanks Liv. Um, hello everybody, good afternoon. Thanks for taking the time out today to join us, really appreciate it. And um, I'm just going to second my uh, Liv's welcome to Duncan. Duncan um, is such a good support uh, in this scheme and it's really useful to have sort of two sides of the, um, the journey that employers and employees or uh, potential employees go through in terms of the kickstart scheme. Um, from a gateway perspective and also from the DWP perspective. So the aim of today is to share as much information with you as we can to help you make decisions um, about uh, hopefully progressing onto this scheme. Um, and yeah, so ask questions as I go along in the chat. We'll, I'm going to try not to talk too much. I've got a few slides, there's quite a bit of information, but the aim really is to keep it informal and to leave as much time at the end to give you the chance to ask all of your questions that hopefully myself, Duncan and Lauren can help you with. So I'm going to start sharing um, my screen, just bear with. Hopefully you can all see um, the screen. I now can't see some of you. And it's not letting me move on, just bear with. There we go. Okay, so I can see you nodding, so hopefully you can see uh, what I'm looking at. Um, so really just an overview of the Kickstart scheme, if you're not already fully aware. Um, it is a £2 billion programme, which has been set up to provide funding to employers to create new six-month um, placements for young people. And these young people are currently on universal credit and have been so for at least three months. And they're currently at risk of long-term unemployment. Um, it's really important that we are um, helping these young individuals who may never have worked um, up until this point. Um, and the scheme has been set up specifically, not only to give them this valuable work experience, but also some essential and crucial skills to enable them to move forward and hopefully um, gain permanent employment in the future. Funding for this scheme is available. It's 100% of the um, employment costs. So the national insurance contributions, the salary um, and the pension contributions. And there's also a um, funding for £1,500 per placement that's for setting up costs that could cover a number of things, um, say travel and uh, training costs, which is uh, quite crucial again for the development of the individuals. Um, applications are open now. There are um, people in placements working now in their six month placements. Um, the applications will remain open until December 21 and final placements will end in June 22. And um, the reason why we like Duncan joining us is lots of the processes do change. It's, it's a new thing. Um, we're evolving, DWP are evolving. Um, and so it's important to keep up to date with the details, particularly on the government website, because um, it has changed and guidance is reviewed continually to make sure that this becomes a really successful scheme. One of the big things that changed that you may be aware of in January was um, the 30 placement um, sort of stipulation where if you had less than 30 placements, you had to go through a gateway organisation. In January, that changed. So now employers have a choice. Um, they are able to either go direct through um, the government website or go through a gateway, dependent. It doesn't matter how many placements they've got. Um, so it, it's, it's nicer for the employers to have the choice. However, as a gateway um, organisation, um, we're, we're quite keen to continue to support the businesses through this journey. Um, certainly the experiences that we've gone through over the last three, few months sort of picking it up ourselves, all the new processes, we've learned a lot um, and we're now in a really good position to provide support to um, employers in their application process. Um, so as much as I'm going to talk um, today about working with a gateway, it doesn't mean that what I'm saying isn't relevant if you decide to go direct because it is. So I'm not giving you different information, the information is the same but I'm talking very much from the experience as being a gateway. 
Um, so if you choose to go through a gateway, they will be required to capture a lot of information about your business, including the number of placements and the types of roles that you can create. And there's um, quite a large element uh, around criteria and um, eligibility for the scheme that you must meet to be able to progress with your application. And it's the gateway's role to um, ensure that your application um, covers as much as possible to um, basically make, uh, give you a stronger chance of being accepted. So once they're happy with um, your applications and the information that you've provided, the gateway submits all the data to DWP. And, and we recognize because of the experience that we've got that actually we can speed up this process for companies. Um, if they go direct, it may take them a bit longer because they haven't got the experience or the knowledge of what exactly DWP are looking for in those applications. Whereas gateways have now learned quite a lot more, um, like I've said over the last months and, and are able to inform um, the employers as they go through the process. These are a couple of um, snapshots really of, of the criteria and the eligibility sort of questions that, it, that essentially you're, you're selecting, um, you're saying yes, you meet the criteria. Um, and, and it's quite crucial, part, parts of the bits that are being picked up are um, including the support for the young people. That's really important, picking up on the employability skills at the end of this journey for that young person. And equally, that this scheme isn't replacing an existing employee's um, role within the organisation. So you must be clear what the um, criteria and eligibility um, points are. A couple of other screenshots um, talk about um, not just ticking the box to say, yes, I meet those um, criteria. You do actually have to demonstrate why you believe you meet them. So the information that we need to collate, this is where we can truly support um, the applications in making sure that they're picking up all of the bits that they should include so that they can clearly demonstrate that um, the job placement has been created just for the Kickstart scheme. And in particular, what those employers are going to do to support that young person um, throughout those six months in terms of developing their work skills. Once the applications have been submitted um, to DWP, there's a panel that basically goes through and they essentially approve or reject the application. They could uh, reject a uh, one placement and accept others, or they could reject the whole thing. And at this time, at the moment, if something is rejected, unfortunately, we don't um, get the information or the reasons as to why. So we can't easily, um, support the business in that rejection process and, and help them understand um, what, what's happened. However, um, there's a lot of work going on at the moment and Duncan may be able to come in um, later on this in terms of trying to change that. So because it could be that we could find out the reason why and help that organization, organization reapply and be accepted. So it's quite crucial that we can pick up on that and work with DWP to get as much information as possible. Um, however, when you're, if you are approved, um, it, it goes through and you've gone through a gateway. The gateway organisation has entered into a grant agreement with DWP and they act as the grant holder. So once your um, application has been approved, you then would enter into an agreement with the gateway by signing an employer agreement. One of the things that I would really stress to any employer who is considering this scheme is to make sure that you do go onto the government website and read through the terms and conditions. It's surprising how many companies haven't actually done that before signing up for this process. And it's really important to understand the responsibility that I believe us as gateways and employers are actually taking on um, in terms of supporting these young people. And it's very clear in the terms and conditions what our responsibility is. So please make sure that you are familiar um, with those before you commence uh, the process. And um, once you've been approved, you would then be sent a vacancy template, which needs to be completed with a lot more detail around the actual role that's been approved. It's effectively the job description for the role. 
Um, and the more information you provide on that template, the more success you'll get at having been matched with the right candidates. So um, put as much information in there. It's really, really crucial then to enable the work coaches in the job centers to review those roles and then work through the, the number of people that they're dealing with and, and consider who are the best matches for those roles. At this point, the relationship sort of slightly changes where um, it becomes the responsibility of the employer to liaise with the candidates who are encouraged to apply for the role. Um, and it sort of instigates your own recruitment processes. You will then deal with um, the applicants. You will choose who you want to see. You will interview them. And hopefully you will find um, a successful candidate and agree um, a start date with them. If you don't have any successful applicants, you can ask for more to be put forward. So it doesn't just end there. So once a start date has been agreed with the um, placement, it's important to advise DWP and the Gateway organisation if you've gone down that route. Um, all of this is clear. You will get communication throughout this process. So it's not um, just me reminding you now what will happen. There will be guidance through the stages as well. And it's important that you add the young person onto your payroll and ensure that they are paid through PAYE. This is part of the eligibility um, criteria and it triggers the funding that covers the employment costs. Um, it's useful to know that you are able to offer more than 25 hours a week and you can also offer to pay the young person more than the national minimum wage, but you should understand that that is at your own cost. You're not obliged to take on the placement and, and give them a permanent um, role at the end of the six months. And you can, if you wish to, take on another placement at the end of that six months. So essentially, if you started the application process now, you could have two people in one role for a 12 month term that is funded. DWP will remain in contact with the young person to help ensure that the placement is going well. And both sides have the right to end the placement should they not be happy at any point during that time. So picking up on the funding, we talked about the um, setup fee of £1,500. That's really there to cover um, things like equipment, any PPE or uniforms. Um, I mentioned travel earlier. You could end up with a young person who's not able to drive and your um, location could be quite far away from where they live. So it may um, help cover any travel costs. But importantly, it should also be spent on the employability support and training. This £1,500 placement um, funding is paid within two weeks of the placement starting. And essentially, if you've gone down the gateway route, the gateway receive the funding and they have to pass it on to the employer. And through the gateways um, terms and conditions with DWP, they have to pass the money on within a very strict amount of time to the employer. They can't sit on that funding. So that I think it's three days off memory that we have to ensure the money is passed to the employer. And then subsequent grants will be paid to cover the employment costs, as I mentioned, um, and that's triggered by um, completing payroll and entering the real time information to HMRC. And it currently states on the government website that those payments will be paid in monthly arrears. So another thing that we recommend is that all employers um, are um, sure that they have sufficient cash flow to support the costs. Um, while the uh, placement is going through the six months. Hopefully I'm not going too quickly. So auditing, anyone familiar with any form of funding um, would know that there are quite strict auditing requirements to make sure um, that the eligible expenditure has been spent as um, intended. So it is recommended that you keep accurate and up-to-date accounts and records. It should um, include any invoices, any receipts, any records, any documentation. We would recommend keeping copies of certificates for training, 
if you set up some form of mentoring um, you could keep records of those meetings and how the, that individual has been developed all those things will support um, how you have enabled and ensured that you've met the terms and conditions um, in providing that young person everything they need and um, as part of the terms and conditions, DWP may at any time during the placement and up to six years after the end of the agreement, conduct these audits and reviews of the delivery and performance of the activities. So again, the six years is quite crucial. That's stipulated in the terms and conditions. So you must keep all your records for that time. And there is a risk of clawback. It's a genuine risk. If you can't demonstrate that you have spent the um, funding in the way that it was intended, there is a risk that it would be requested back. So I've talked a lot about gateways. We are Herefordshire Worcestershire Chamber of Commerce. We are a gateway. Um, why would you choose a gateway? And why in particular would you choose us? Um, I thought I'd put a little bit about um, what we've done in our journey so far. So um, we've had a 90% success rate with all of our applications that have gone through us. Um, I strongly believe that's because we have worked with the businesses, we've helped, we've learnt as we've gone along, we've, we recognise um, maybe where somebody uh, actually might not even be eligible and we would stop them before they even go through the process um, which is it's quite time consuming there's a lot of information that we need to collate so we could even advise people for example if you've been in your if you're only in your first year of trading and you haven't filed any accounts it's likely you wouldn't be accepted at that point however if you're a few months off filing your accounts you could obviously apply post that point and you should be successful we we've learned that going through this journey we understand some of the pitfalls now so uh, and we're quite proud of our 90 percent success rate um, in terms of the wraparound care we recognize for a lot of businesses they don't have um, the um, facilities to be able to provide recognized courses for example um, and we, we've got a full training suite of courses that offer really good support, um, particularly around CV writing, time um, keeping, communicating, um, all, all of these skills that some of these individuals may need um, as they join these organisations. This is something that we can offer and we've um, largely discounted our courses in support of this scheme. So if you did choose to go um, with us, for example, as a gateway, there would be a fee that comes out of the £1,500 to support that, ele that element of training. And we would take all of the work um, in terms of um, providing the evidence for the audit. Um, we would keep all that together and collate it all for you and facilitate the courses and ensure that the individual has benefited from that course and try and help you demonstrate what they've learned from it as well. So there's a lot that we believe we can offer in terms of our wraparound care. We can also offer you Lauren, who's been introduced to you at the beginning, um, who's quite crucial in, in the process and being that go-to person who understands the process, who um, will work with you. She will take you along the journey. She will guide you along the journey and basically take the pain of the process away from um, the companies that are going through the application process. It can be painful. There can be a lot of to and fro in and, and Lauren can do all that for you. And if there's any questions, if we don't know the answer, we will go away and find it. And that's what Lauren's there to do. She's there to support you, um, not only just through the application process, but also through the wraparound care and actually through the whole of the six month um, journey with the young person that's joined your organisation. And we're also very proud of the relationships that we've got with our local DWP account managers. Um, we work really well with Duncan. We've got some great account managers that are supporting us and are there at the sort of um, drop of a hat to answer any of our questions. Um, and, we, and that's working really well for us. And um, equally, as part of the um, 52 accredited chambers with British Chambers of Commerce, we have a kickstart forum that has links direct to government. So we've been 
able to provide feedback, particularly at the start of the process where I think we'd admit there were long delays, there were issues with the processes. And um, this is a big task that I think we underestimated the amount of interest that it would generate. Um, and DWP have worked so hard to get um, everything and all the processes in order to manage the volumes that have come through, which have been huge. And they've done an excellent work at doing that. And, and equally being part of the BCC forum has enabled us to provide feedback, to make suggestions and work at a much higher level to help this scheme be a huge success, not only within our local region, but across the country. So that's really it. That's me talking, giving you a very whistle stop tour of the process. Um, I want to open it up, obviously, to questions uh, and give you the chance to um, sort of delve more into anything that you want to pick up on. Obviously, the details will be shared with you. If you do have questions after the presentation, um, you can email us at kickstart at hwchamber.co.uk. And also, um, if you are interested and you want to register your interest, if you went onto our website and followed the links, it will um, basically instigate an automatic process that starts collecting um, the information that we need uh, that I've talked through earlier on in the presentation. So I'm going to open it up. I'm going to stop sharing the presentation now and open it up for the questions. Thank you, Tan. We have had a couple of questions already in the chat that I'm happy to go through, but I think the first one, which is from David, um, is can placements be for more than 24 hours has already been answered. David, did you hear? Are you happy with that now? OK, yeah. So placements can be for more than 25 hours. Um, next question from Mary. If a placement doesn't work out, what notice needs to be given? And then a second part to the question, what would then happen if some of the grant money has been spent? Want me to pick that one up? Yes, please. <laughs> Hi everybody. Um, the, 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 the way this basically works is your standard terms and conditions of employment apply to the Kickstart participant. So all your health and safety, your disciplinary, your attendance management, everything actually applies as, as you would expect for any other employee. These are no different uh, from that respect. If the, if the placement doesn't work out, and that can be from either side, then you can terminate the placement. You've already paid the money out in terms of the setup costs, so no, you're not asked to return, you're not asked to return that, uh, that, that payment from the £1,500. And um, obviously, we know through HMRC uh, how much that person's been entitled to, and that money's either been paid or not, and we will top we will make those payments up until that, that, the person, that person actually leaves. You can then come back and go, can we have somebody else please take up that placement or you can extend or do whatever you need to do. Is that okay? okay? Yeah, thank you. No, thank, thank you. Thank you, Duncan. Mary, has that, um, has that answered your question? Okay, cool. um, next question, we've got Andrew, uh, can you expand on the reporting process during the six month placement, please? Hi, I'm trying to find, oh, there you are, Andrew. Do you mean, if we can just clarify, do you mean um, the auditing bit that I mentioned? What, what do you, yeah. Um, <clears throat> really good question. I don't know everything yet. Um, if I just explain where we are in, in the journey, we've got some live placements um, on, on the board ready to be matched to suitable candidates. Um, so at the moment, uh, we're not at that phase. However, and I am actually in the process of getting the information so that we know exactly what is going to be required of the employers. Um, so I can't answer that at the moment. Maybe Duncan might be able to help. Um, but I would, as I said, I am working on it because I want to know. I want to know what we've got to have ready. And, and, and I also am interested in how um, the RTI information is picked up by the DWP and how they link that to the um, person in particular. So I've got lots of questions as well. Um, so that as soon as I find out and have more understanding, I would share that with you. Um, as a group that's already shown an interest, and if this is what, sorry, if you would if you would want this, 
then um, we could continue liaising and updating you with things that we learn um, as we go along, if that's how you want to carry on um, post this webinar. Is there anything I, you could add, Duncan? Yeah, so <clears throat> we're, not, we're not looking to burden you with um, uh, onerous reports. So um, we would expect um, that you would, as you would do with any new start, starter, you know, you might have an induction process, you might have a portfolio they start putting together. So we'd, we'd anticipate that the, the person would actually have one of those because that's then their evidence that they will take away when they, if they go on for another job. But we're not anticipating you're coming back to us and going, this is what they've done, this is where they are, this worked, this didn't work. That, that, from that point of view, we're not going to burden you with that kind of information. The audit may or may not take place. There's no, there's, we're not saying every single person will be audited. We will probably do sample auditing. And that's purely from a point of view that this scheme has been set up to cater for about 250,000 opportunities across the country. We haven't got the resource to audit every single one of those. So we'll probably be sample checking through uh, in terms of, of, of what, what's been happening and looking at from a financial point of view, did all the money actually go where we needed it to go, et cetera. So there is no reporting pack per se. Um, it, it is just about, um, uh, we, the work coach will talk to the individual. They'll be asking questions. And if they come back to us uh, because they don't get a full-time job, they'll probably want to see their portfolio that they've built up because that's good evidence in terms of their skill set, et cetera. In terms of the payment side, um, so, so basically um, uh, every opportunity has a, has a unique identifying number. Um, and when, when the payment comes through, because basically what we do is we get from uh, HMRC, they will feed us these organizations, these people have been paid uh, and they're under the scheme. So we'll know from the number they gave us who the employer is, and we'll know from that, we'll know who the young person is. So Gateway will get that information so they know where they will send the individual bits of money. Because, you know, as, as Tani's been saying, they have multiple companies they're working with, and we might hit them with a I don't know, a 20,000 pound chunk of money at some point. So we have to make sure that they understand which employer, which person gets what amount of money. So it's all geared around the unique numbers that we actually have. Okay. That makes sense too. Thank you. Does that, does that help Andrew? Cool, okay. Um, Joe, yes, um, I will share the slides after the event um, and if you missed the beginning part, we recorded it. So you'll be able to go on the YouTube channel and catch up if you want to watch it from the beginning. Um, we have had another five or six questions come in in the last 30 seconds. So I'm going to try and get through them. So we've got time for all of them. Is there an ability to extend beyond six months or is that the maximum? That's the maximum. Okay, thank you. How are suitable candidates matched with placements? I'll let Duncan answer that. I was going to say, that's, is that me? <clears throat> so as, as Tanya explained, that there is a lot of checking goes on pre-acceptance of companies and also the opportunities. And that's purely down to our duty of care to the young individuals. We're looking at 16 to 25 year olds in terms of going into these opportunities. Um, when everything goes through and we understand what the opportunity is, that opportunity is loaded onto the universal credit system that all our offices have access to. So when they go into the system on a given day, they can press a tab that has Kickstart on it and the opportunities for that location will appear on screen. They will, because they're working with their caseload of young people, they will know you know, has somebody got an engineering um, uh, background or wants to get into engineering? Does somebody want to be, go creative? Does somebody else want to do care? So they identify who potentially might want to have a look at that opportunity. Conversation will then take place between the work coach and the young individual to go, here's this opportunity, talk through it with them. And then I suppose there's a bit of a reverse selling. The young person needs to explain why they think they're the right person for the job. And the mantra that we use internally in the department is, <clears throat> this is not about numbers, this is about the right person. So we're looking for the right person for the right opportunity and also at the right point in time for that person. 
Um, we are talking about young people. Um, my comment to people is you're going to get a rough diamond. You're not necessarily going to get the finished article. So you're not going to get an engineer. You're going to get somebody who wants potentially to become an engineer. Um, so we try and do best fit that we can. Um, and then they will be told that they should then, we will refer them on our system, technical term, sorry. Uh, the young person will then go through whatever the application process you have defined on your job template that they need to do. So that could be going onto your website, that could be an electronic link that's already there. They will answer your application process, attach CVs if that's what you're asking for. You will then sift those applications and you will decide if you want to see everybody that's applied or nobody that's applied because they don't quite match. Um, and then you'll, you know, you'll take whatever action. If, if you don't want to take anybody on, then one of the account managers that, that Tony was talking about will probably get in contact with you and ask the reasons. That, that's not for you, you know, we need to understand what are we doing wrong, basically. Do we need to do something else? Do we need to put some additional training into the young person so they're more equipped and ready to come to you? Um, as I said, my, my comment would be, these aren't finished articles. Um, they could be, this could be the very first time they've entered the adult world of employment. And that, as, you know, as we all remember, that's quite a scary thing to do. Uh, we try to equip them the best we can with support services, pre that, that, that application. Our wonderful gateway organizations are also doing the wraparound support stuff and they're also doing work with them. Um, it's just a case of we will try and get a good fit where we can, but at the end of the day, you can still say no. Okay, thank you, Duncan. Uh, next question from Sarah. If more placements become available within the business, is there an option to add to additional roles or can you make an additional application? Yes, there is that opportunity and it's a simplified process because you've already been approved. Okay, good to know, thank you. Next question from Dave. Um, as a sole trader, it would be fantastic to have a second pair of hands in my business. Is there any other sole traders who have already been through the process that would present their experience of the kickstart process? That's actually a question maybe to the... It, it's a, well, I'll share it's, what I understand where we are at in terms of sole traders. So at the moment, um, or certainly initially, sole traders were unable to apply purely because um, some of the information that we, we capture for the application um, that they, they can't complete. Um, so what I do know is there is a lot of work because we recognize and uh, DWP recognize and certainly the group of chambers recognize that actually a lot of sole traders are probably best placed, you know, some excellent companies that would really be able to bring on a young person um, into their organizations and to, to develop them so they are perfect people to be able to um, be part of this scheme. I do know there's a lot of work from the chamber forum that I'm involved in there's a lot of work that's gone on um, as to how we can work around the, um, uh, the barrier um, of them not being able to apply and some chambers and some gateways not just chambers are looking at being the employer of that person on behalf of the sole trader. So that's being considered, but also there are other things um, being considered. So at the moment, um, I don't know if that's been uh, achieved yet uh, with anybody. You may know, Duncan, but I certainly know there's a lot of effort going on um, to try and, and, and get around that because there is a huge recognition of, of how valuable sole traders are to this scheme. Is there anything you could add, Duncan? Yeah, no, no you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I think um, if you look at the demographic of our labour market, most of our employers across Herefordshire are in the micro end of businesses, so that's zero to nine. Um, when we first set the scheme up, and Tanya was, was actually quite polite, to be honest, um, it was a mess when we first started this. Yeah, we hadn't thought through a lot of this stuff. I know that would be a real surprise to you that government does that kind of thing, but anyway, we did. Um, <clears throat> the recognition that um, small company sole traders are, are fairly crucial to, to the success of the programme. Tanya is right. What some of our gateways have done is they assume the role of the employer, but the placement's actually with the sole trader. And that's, that's really good where we've got, because you know, sole traders may not be 
be registered on PayEYE. Uh, I know from from experience, uh, I've talked to charities where the charity, the, the people they've got working in the charity, are volunteers and don't get paid, but they want to get involved in the scheme, and obviously they're not registered as PayEYE. So the gateway can pick up the that part of it, but at the end, but the the the, the placement is still with the end organisation, and the money still flows through to the end employer, and and the the uh, wraparound support payments and everything else. It's not slick and smooth currently, but it will be fairly soon. Okay, thanks both. Um, the age range of people who qualify to be employed under this scheme, 16 to 24, is it? Yep. Yeah, um, that one's for Andrew. Um, and from Sarah, I've already applied for the process. Um, I'm worried that I haven't provided enough information. Is there an opportunity to apply again or add additional information to my current application? Sarah, sorry, Dan, can you go? No, I was going to be open and honest with everybody because we're all friends here. Um, our rejection process is not particularly clever. So as Tanya said, you know, basically there's a letter comes out that says you haven't been accepted, but we're not going to tell you why. And you have to go back to gov.uk to find out potentially why you may have been rejected, but we're not going to tell you why. Um, don't ask me why we've done that. I don't know. It, it even comes down to me. They won't even tell me why some people have been rejected. Uh, and it makes life really difficult. But this is where the gateway experience comes in. So that's why I, I would recommend a gateway, definitely. But what we can do, and our account managers that, uh, that Lauren's involved with and others are involved with, they have, they have access into systems. So we can actually see, although we're not meant to see it and we're not meant to say anything, we can see why something might be a problem. Um, and yes, you can change it. You can do another application. The, 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 the key ones that tend to cause causes issues are around um, what they call additionality. They say, yes, this has been... Uh, this has been set up purely for kickstart, but actually the, the wording is not there. So we do a lot of work around that with some people. And the other one is tends to be around uh, the wraparound support. So again, it's just explaining in a bit more detail, but um, gateway organization with our DWP account managers can work with you to make sure the wording is more, co more correct. And then you can put an applicate reapply and it goes through a lot quicker. Thanks, Duncan. I, I was also going to say, Sarah, if you've um, applied through us, we can pick it up with you after if you want. We can take a look at the application, um, let you know where we are in the process and um, see if we think anything's missing. So if you'd like that, we can contact you after. Okay, okay. we'll do that. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Um, so in, in my follow up email that I'll send to everybody um, that attended this this afternoon, I will include um, the link to um, to the website, which has got more information on. I'll also include the Kickstart um, email address so that you can get in touch with them, um, with Lauren to help you through anything in a little bit more detail and the link to the slides as well. So you can use those to recap. Um, currently, no more questions in the chat. Um, but if anyone does want to ask something as we're a relatively small group, feel free to raise your hand and you can come off mute just while we've got five minutes left. Anyone? No, everyone knows exactly what they're doing. <laughs> I, everyone happy? I wouldn't mind just adding if, if everyone is happy and there's no more questions. I do just want to thank Duncan again. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll agree how valuable it is to have Duncan join us on, on these particularly from the experience of the DWP side of things. There's certainly things that we can't answer because we're not working on that side of things. So thank you, Duncan. Really My appreciate pleasure. you um, joining us today. And I can hope I, can you I say, Can I say all... one more thing? Sorry, can I, can I just okay. say, because I'm, somebody hasn't asked a question that I would normally expect to get answered, or there's some hands up, so maybe they will. Um, yes, there's a scheme there that's about work experience, um, but, from conversations with lots of employers that I've actually had, a lot of employers see, are seeing this scheme as a way to have a long interview process and recruit staff. And also they're using it as pre-apprenticeship training 
absolutely right. That's exactly how we want this scheme to work. That's what this is all about. When we ran this scheme uh, about eight, nine years ago under slightly different um, uh, circumstances um, and around, slightly worked slightly differently, but it was the same basis of paid uh, work experience for young people. In a, well in excess of 50% of the participants to that scheme um, either stayed with the person they, they, they did their work experience with in a full-time job, stayed in the sector or went into further education or apprenticeship. We know this scheme is extremely effective at what it needs to do for our younger generation. We know this works while we were all, all, we were all over the moon when Rishi stood up and announced it um, uh, July last year when he came forward with it. It works. We know it works. So please, please, please yeah, put forward some opportunities. Have a, have a look at some of our young, young people out there. We've seen some fantastic jobs come through through various employers, employers that we've never seen work with before. A lot of stuff around IT, a lot of stuff around digital, web design, game design, technicians, absolutely fantastic opportunities for our young people, which is brilliant. So if you haven't, yeah, one last time, please do. Sorry. No, no, thank you. It's, it's, uh, we all feel very passionate, I think, about the scheme. And I, for one, will be over the moon when we get our live vacancies, we get people in place. And if at the end of this, when the scheme finishes and we can turn around and acknowledge the amount of um, permanent roles that have been created for these young people, I will be immensely proud. So hopefully you can join us on that journey.